Hi everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to get started with 3D printing here at the TCPL Makerspace. We have three 3D printers available for use. They are all Prusa brand printers. The two larger models are the MK3S Plus, and the smaller model is the Prusa Original Mini Plus. Let's take a closer look at the MK3S Plus. The plastic used for 3D printing is called filament. It's a thermal plastic that's wound onto a spool. The filament spool is stored here at the top of the printer and feeds down directly into the extruder, where the filament is heated up into its molten state and pushed out or extruded through the nozzle onto the build plate here. This plate heats up to help printed objects adhere to the surface. It's magnetically attached to the printer and can be removed by placing your thumbs at these designated spots and pushing up. This can be done when stubborn prints are hard to remove. Gently flex the plate until your print pops off. Just make sure that the build plate isn't hot before doing this. To turn the printer on, flip the small black switch on the back of the printer on the right hand side. Your print files need to be saved to an SD card on the MK3S Plus. Insert the SD card face down on the left side of the LCD screen. You can rotate this knob to navigate through the menu options and push down on the knob to select one. Select the print from SD option and find your file. Once you have selected your file, the extruder and build plate take a couple of minutes to heat up and then you're on your way. When the 3D printer starts, you'll notice that it extrudes a practice strip to clean the nozzle right along the edge of the bed. Then your job will start. And here's your completed cat with supports around the belly and face and tail. Those will easily be able to be removed once the cat is removed from the build plate. The first step in 3D printing is acquiring the file for the object that you want to print. These are called STL files. There are thousands of STL files that are free to download from websites like Thingiverse and Printables. But if you can't find what you're looking for online, you can also create an STL file yourself using CAD software. If you're new to CAD, we recommend visiting the website Tinkercad.com. Tinkercad is a web-based, free-to-use CAD software program that is great for beginners. They have several tutorial videos to help you get started, and once you've created something, you can export it as an STL file for 3D printing. Once you have your STL file, the next step is running it through a software program called a slicer. Slicers convert your STL file into a language that the 3D printers can understand. This language is called G-Code. G-Code is essentially a series of commands that allow the printer to create your object. There are lots of different slicer programs out there. Many of them are designed to be used with dozens of different printers, and some are just for specific brands. We're going to be using Prusa Slicer, which is just for Prusa brand printers. Once you've opened up Prusa Slicer, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have the correct printer model selected from the right-hand pane. Under Printer, Click the drop-down menu and select either the original Mini Plus or the MK3S Plus. Under Filament, make sure that the Prusament PLA is selected. Now we're ready to load our STL file. Click on the Add icon at the top of the screen and open your file wherever you have it saved. Now that you have your STL file loaded, you can hold left-click and drag your mouse to rotate the camera view. You can pan the view by holding down right click and dragging your mouse. And using your scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. On the left side of the screen, you can access some basic tools that allow you to move your print around the build plate, scale it up or down, and rotate it along the X, Y, and Z axes. Within our STL file selection, you can view some more information under the object manipulation window on the right pane. Here you can view your object's position and size. You can also rotate and scale your object from here by entering in specific values if you need to make more precise adjustments. On the left plane, under the Rotate, you will find the Place on Face tool, which is a very convenient tool for correcting the orientation of your object. When you select this option, several areas of your object will be highlighted. By clicking on one of these highlighted areas, your object will be placed onto the build plate based on your selection, as you can see here. A few other quick things to mention. You can copy and paste to create duplicates of your print by using the keyboard shortcut Control-C and Control-V, 
or by clicking copy and paste at the top of your screen. Here you can also find the Arrange tool, which is a quick and easy way to organize multiple objects on the build plate. You can delete an object by clicking Delete up here or by pressing the Delete key on your keyboard. In the upper right corner under Print Settings, you will see a drop-down menu with lots of different profiles. Each profile is optimized for a range of quality options that go from Ultra Detail to Draft. By selecting profiles marked for detail or quality, your prints are going to look great, but will end up taking much more time to finish. By selecting Speed or Draft presets, your prints won't have as much detail or surface quality, but will come out much faster. The number and millimeters in the profile name indicates the layer height. Layer height is a measurement of how much material the printer's nozzle extrudes for each layer of your print. A smaller number translates to better surface quality, but longer print times while a large number means sacrificing quality for shorter print times. Thankfully, Prusa Slicer does a great job setting up these profiles, so you don't really need to mess with a lot of the settings yourself. But let's take a look at a couple of settings you may need. First, take a look at the upper right corner of the screen, and you'll see three tabs labeled Simple, Advanced, and Expert. These modes will determine how many different settings you can view and adjust. Simple shows us only the most essential settings, while Expert gives us access to dozens more. You can see this yourself by clicking on the Print Settings tab here and changing the mode. We're going to stick with Basic Mode for now. The Print Settings tab brings us to a menu that lists options for layer height, infill, and supports. Under Layers and Parameters, we can manually change the layer height to something other than what is offered by the preset. You can also add or remove shells, which are the outlines or outer perimeters of each layer. Increasing the number of shells will increase your object's durability. Generally, two to three shells are sufficient for most prints. Under the infill menu, we can adjust the density and fill pattern of our print. The infill density refers to the amount of plastic used on the inside of your print. Increasing infill density will make your print stronger while also increasing print time. Infill pattern is the structure and shape of the material inside of a part. Ranging from simple lines to more complex geometric shapes, infill patterns can affect a part's strength, weight, print time, and flexibility. One of the most important things to consider for a successful print is determining whether or not you will need supports. There are parts of your print that may not be supported by any material underneath them, such as the belly of our cat here. To avoid filament just dropping onto the build plate in these areas, we can enable supports to hold them up. Supports are thin pillars of filament that are generated underneath unsupported areas or overhangs. Once your print is completed, the supports snap off easily. To enable them, go to the Support Material menu under Print Settings. There you can check a box next to Generate Support Material option. The slicer will automatically place supports where they are needed based on a threshold in the preset. Now we're all set to start slicing. Click on the Slice Now button in the lower right corner. After a few moments, you will see a preview of your print, including any support material. There will also be a table that shows you how long printing each part of your object will take and how much filament it will use. If you need to reduce your print time, try increasing your layer height, reducing infill density, or scaling your object down in size if possible. If everything looks good, go ahead and click the Export G-Code button in the lower right corner. It will prompt you to name your new file and save. Once again, if printing on the MK3S+, Plus, you will need to save your G-Code file to a SD card, which we can provide at the Makerspace. And that about wraps it up. Thanks to everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the Tompkins County Public Library Makerspace.